Hi everyone, Michelle here and welcome to The Daily M. Recently, I gave a class at Bikram Yoga Folsom and not too long ago, I taught a class in Chicago at Hot Meadows Yoga and they were super classes, but what made them of more value is that I stayed another hour to talk about the yoga practice as well as um, insights and expertise and wisdom from my 20 years of doing yoga. Um, and it wound up being super profound, and I thought the questions were quite interesting from the students. So what's to follow in this Daily M is an hour-long recording that we did after I taught in Bikram Yoga Folsom. So I would love it if you just put this on in your car and listen to it and gain some valuable insight because it will relate to your own practice. But... If you're a studio owner or if you're a student, you can talk to your studio owner, anyone who's interested. I would love, love, love to come out and teach a class and maybe even offer a talk too um, about the yoga postures. But as you'll listen to in this recording, there's a lot of more other things of great value about what this yoga does and what it pulls out you know, for each of us and being our full self. So take a listen to this, and if you are interested, you can email to me at michelle at bikramyogasanjose.com. Very easy. My name is with one L, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, at bikramyogasanjose.com. And if you're interested even more, you're welcome to talk to Ryan and Isadora. They own Bikram Yoga Folsom, as well as Carla and Gordy that own Hot Meadows Yoga. So thanks, everyone, for listening, and I hope you get a lot out of it, too. Here it comes. Right, it's stretching and heat. So if you have an injury, you got scar tissue, you have to come in here. That takes a long time. Right, if you even look up and Google connective tissue. Right, you guys know what that is, fascia? I think it's a very, you know, a topic that we don't talk about enough. No reason why, I just don't think it's, maybe it's not interesting to people. But fascia, your connective tissue, is the stuff that holds your body together. Right? If you can imagine like a honeycomb looking gelatin, right? It's what holds your organs and your glands and everything in place. And a lot of um, our energy, our conduit for energy is through our fascia. That's why Chinese medicine works with it a lot. So it's your chi. And if your fascia starts to harden, Guess what it's doing to your organs and your muscles and your tissue? And how about even around your neck? Where do, where's the, how is the oxygen going to get up into the brain? And the only way that you can work with connective tissue to maintain its suppleness is heat and stretching. Isn't that alone inspiring enough? We can even go home and say, good, I'm done. I'm going to come here every day because I know that this is what, really, truly, it's heat and stretching is just fascinating. Then, the other thing that the American College of Physicians now has come out with is that um, spinal articulation, if, if that's not happening, um, uh, and actually, I take that back. It, they found that the, a, a good way to help low back pain is with spinal articulation um, in the heat with stretching. So, I mean, all of it points to yoga, doesn't it? Right? I mean, all of it points to, and this isn't what I wanted to start with, but let me just explain a little bit. You know, um, it's not complicated. All we need to do is stretch. That's all we're doing. This is a 90 minute series to get you to, it's not because, you know, someone said, I'll get to you in one second, but someone said, oh, it's 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes, literally, actually, it used to be four hours. To really touch every organ gland in the body, there's a lot more to do, but to pull out these 26 with the breathing exercises, you're getting into everything, all that you need. Do it every day. Like, I'm sure you hear Ryan and Isadora, your teachers say it's like brushing your teeth. I know it's kind of funny, but it is that. It is that. It's that necessary. <clears throat> right? I love the quote, never too late, never too old, never too sick. That's great. My favorite one now is, 
Yoga maintains youth, body full of vitality, immune to diseases even at an old, old age. That was said 100 years ago. It's so true in our 21st century. Right? Yes? So, um, the other types of yoga, what do you feel about them in comparison to people? I love them. I really do. I, I think, I love that question because you know, I'm not on a soapbox to have you do Bikram yoga, do yoga. <laughs> I prefer, and, and myself, um, the whole reason why I started yoga, uh, I'll tell you my story in a little bit, but just to answer your question a little bit more. Bikram yoga, if you study it enough, medicinally, it's probably the, I, don't, I hate to word these best, but for lack of a better way of saying it, right? It works the spine, you know, it's for every body. Right? Like my mission in life is to get 7 billion people to do yoga. Really, it truly is. I feel like everybody needs a yoga practice and I know that this yoga is Bikram's beginning yoga. It's intended for everybody. I don't care if you, if you haven't worked out a day in your life, you can come in here. That's why personally I like it. And then from there, right, I, I love it because of the intensity. You know, I love it because I know overall it's giving me what I need. Medicinally, like I said, I'm 55. I never got into this yoga to maintain my youth at an old age, but now I'm grateful, right? So again, it's the heat and the stretching and everything is done in sequential order, right? I have energy. My mom died of early on Alzheimer's. She died at the age that I was. I'm now older than she was. So she got it at 49, she died at 54, and it changed the trajectory of my whole life. I got into yoga to help me with stress. Little did I know, and I, my good friends know I had a lot of weird stuff I thought going on in my brain. Who knows? I'll never know. But, right, dementia. You know, sometimes we have these fancy words for things, but really it's about maintaining oxygen in the body to keep, you know, our cells filled with oxygen so we have the, the proper immune system and the nutrients with the rich red blood cells. Like I said, it's simple. It's not that complicated. So for me, um, I feel like Bikram's beginning yoga, if it can bring in someone who's never done yoga before, and they're just like, where's Shu? Is she in here? No. No, okay, that's fine. So let's just say there's people that have never been exposed to yoga before. They come in here, and all of a sudden they awaken. We awaken to something that can maintain, can give us the health insurance, and we feel good even after one class. If that starts them on their journey, it starts you on their journey, and you want to start exploring other kinds of yoga, Great! All kinds of yoga is really good. Just do yoga. Gotta stretch. I think the heat is advantageous. You know, I think Bikram yoga gives you everything. You know, for me, I like the predictability. I don't just like the predictability of the sequence, I like the predictability of the words. I think that puts me in a meditative state. I, don't, I know what you're saying and my mind gets like a metronome. And then I can go deep into who I am without having to think that you're going to use a different word or concept on me. Just saying. The package is here. Right? And I'm a, I was a workout junkie. And the reason why I like Bikram Yoga is because I got everything. I didn't have time to do everything. But for Bikram Yoga, I kicked my ass. Sorry. You know what I mean? It, 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 was, it was giving me my, my, my overall health. And it was giving me my meditation. And it was the first thing that helped me deal with grief. I was very angry, and I didn't show it. I didn't understand why my mom was gone. I felt like an orphan. I was not connected to anybody. I poured my life into my work, still with a smile on my face, still felt really blessed, but I missed my best friend. It was the first time that I felt connected. There was a voice inside me that said, get there. That's why you, all of you, there was the same voice in you, in your way, that said, come. You gotta stay listening to that voice you did, right? All the, look at you, two months now, right? Gives you everything. So my story, I, um, so uh, I was a runner. Uh, I lived in San Francisco and uh, I worked for a company called Il Fornaio Restaurants. There's one in Sacramento. Um, my mom passed away. She had dementia for like four years. And, you know, eventually it took her. 
Um, and it was, she passed away March of 98, and I started yoga in August, August the 11th of 1998. I remember the day I started. You know, there were phone books back then. So I looked up, and I had Tony Sanchez as my first teacher, which is very fortuitous, if you know who Tony Sanchez is. He's a very well-known yoga teacher in our world. He taught me a lot about alignment. I had no idea how popular he was. And he told me to go to Bikram Yoga's College of India anytime I traveled. So he's the one who introduced me to Bikram Yoga, ironically, you know, Tony. And um, I started then with Mary Jarvis. Uh, and it wasn't until 2000 that um, I knew I needed to leave the job I was in. Was it feeding my soul? I wanted to do something more. I opened 17 restaurants. I'm grateful for that experience because it helped me to open, learn how to open a studio. And I went to teacher training fall of 2001. It was like two weeks after 9-11. It was a very emotional teacher training. It was like three, four hundred of us. And um, I opened Bikram Yoga San Jose um, in January of 2003. So we were in a studio that was about 2,500 um, square feet. And our yoga room was 900 square feet. We probably had 40 to 45 classes a week, and each class had like 60 people. It was back in the day when yoga, yoga started out as yogurt. So people didn't understand yoga. They were like, yogurt? I'm like, no, yoga. It's yoga. <laughs> and then it got really popular, right? And then we grew, and we opened up a studio um, right next door. Uh, we share one of the same walls, and now it's 7,000 square feet. And we've been there 17 years, and hopefully another 10. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I recently won uh, the International Yoga Competition for my division, 50 plus. Woohoo! Yes, which is great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I, you know, I, I don't mean to say but I, I should say yes and, right? Yes and. <laughs> yes and. Um, I'm known and what I'm, I'm very proud of that, but I'm also very proud that I'm a regular practitioner. I mean, if you let that sink for a minute, right? I've been practicing since 1998, probably every day for the last 13, 14 years. That's pretty cool. So if I was somebody that was in the science world, I would probably come looking for me and say, man, I'd like to test you and see what you're about, what your blood is like, what you're, right? Mm -hmm. Think about that. How many people do you know that have done the yoga consistently for that amount of time? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. And you know what? All I did was show up. So I tell you that because me too. I had many times, many years, where situations were rough. My body, I had a left hip problem. I had a tingling sensation down my right arm. I had a manager who had glioblastoma and passed away in 22 months, and I was all involved in grief all over again. You know, I um, was in an extreme amount of debt with, you know, the yoga studio. And I mean, I, I mean we all have our stories. But I didn't forget my practice. I didn't forget my practice. So like I told you today, my goal here is, is to give you value. I, can, I wanna talk to you about the postures, but I wanna talk to you and ingrain in you to practice. Just keep your practice. My breakthroughs came at year three. Year three! That sounds like a short period of time, it's not. That's a lot of Tuesday mornings where you're like, oh God, am I ever gonna get better? Am I ever gonna get better? <laughs> year three! is when I finally saw my, my standing bow. And then it wasn't until year seven. Year nine, and then last year, uh, probably because of all the training with the international, I don't know, I opened up even more even after 20 years and I'm 55, so there's no end. So, you know, you gotta go with the ups and downs. And what a teacher that is, isn't that life? I think Tony Robbins said that. Like, what makes us think we grow in a straight line? Nature doesn't. Branches law look funny, <laughs> but the tree, that's us. 
so don't keep going. I had uh, surgery on my foot, uh, year 2000. It was before I owned a studio. I thought it was going to be out maybe three weeks. And I wound up um, getting it wet. It's, my doctor was so mad at me. I, I don't know. I'm silly. I forgot to put a wrap around it in the shower or something. I don't know, whatever. But I was out 11 weeks, no yoga. And you know what? I came back. I was so excited to come back. And it was Tony's studio. And I was so happy. I was still able to stretch. And just, I actually felt stronger. So I tell you that because if life is going to throw you curveballs, which it is, it is, just go with it. Don't stop your practice. I see it all the time. Um, I'm not saying you're this way, but sometimes when new people start, they're so excited every day. Oh my God, and I did it. And all of a sudden, life pulls you away for a month or two, and I'll see it for two years. Right? Because sometimes you don't go back, you don't go back, and then you're like, oh my God. You know, now it's going to be so hard. Right? So I always tell new people, it's like, just pace yourself. Just don't worry. If, it can, it's, if it's once a week for a while, then it's twice a week. Because the idea is you're not, you're not, and you know this, and again, I'm just trying to validate and put value into what you're doing. Your yoga practice, it isn't your yoga practice in your life. It is your life. It's, it is your life. So whatever your life is giving you, you can't, you didn't, couldn't go all week. It's okay. You're gonna go, he was, Michael was sick. So be patient with the breakthroughs. They come at the most unexpected times. They happen, right? And they happen because you're enthusiastic and you're willing to just show up and do the work, right? You don't have to be, you know, push yourself and deplete yourself, but you can't expect you know, your harvest is going to come from all of the labor you do. You're like tilling the soil, right? I mean, I'm giving you examples of nature, and that's what we are. So do it with no frustration and just love it. And you're doing that, and you just want to reinforce that. Because what I tell you, hopefully you spread to 7 billion people. Got a lot of work to do. Yes? Like, what do you do if you hit a, a point where you're, you're losing the enthusiasm? Do you have any recommendation yeah. to I do. gain that yeah. back if you're hitting a low ebb? Yeah. Thank you for asking that and for your honesty. Um, I can tell them to recommend some things for you, but I think one of the things that you want to do is even, after, even if you have to fake it, get here. Right? Even if it's even if it's a challenge, just know that that will pass. This is one of the beautiful things why I like Bikram Yoga. And I'm not saying you're this way, but I'm going to give this analogy because it is so monotonous. I did this. Where because it's so the same, I did this thing where, you know, it's too boring. I need to go out and do something else. But all I was feeding was a mind that liked to jump one thing to the next. In my mind, you could be at a very sweet spot, right? Where now, and I'm, I'm looking at Ryan and dogs, they hear me talk a lot. You know, our lives, we're, we're being so um, inundated with um, all this sexy ways of grabbing our attention, right? Like now all we need to do is hit a button and something can happen. So we have this instant gratification. But if you think about that over and over again, we've lost our sense of leaning back and being patient. So if we don't get that immediate sense or on our timeline, you know, maybe on an unconscious level, we want to go to something else and saturate, satiate, I think is the word, right? Yeah, there you go, that feel good thing. Whereas right now, you're at that spot where you've got to work hard, right, to not fall into the seduction and go to the real journey of your work and that's hard so so come regardless but nurture yourself do more self-care right meaning find something that inspires you and read it 
take walks out in nature. You know, go walk with a friend, go see a funny movie, right? Do more things that help you feel good knowing that you're gonna stay, don't, don't go off course. Because all you're doing is jumping to the next thing and you're gonna stay in that same gerbil wheel, right? We don't wanna go wide, we wanna go high and deep. And you're there. How long have you been practicing? I was one of those that practiced years ago and then stopped. And then recently. Love it. Back, so. That's so great. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's when you say it takes three years, it took three years for you, it's, it gets to be difficult when you, your body won't go yeah. the way you want it to go. Yeah. It, so. yeah. But you know what? You were here, you left, and there was a voice that said, come back. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to stay stay there. That's the voice sometimes that's covered with a bunch of stuff, but it poked out enough, right? And you have this studio now in Folsom, which is so great. There's not a lot of places that have a place to go to, and you've got great leaders here, and you've got a community here, right? So even on those tough days, this is your breakthrough time, right? So be kind to yourself. Man, sometimes can I, I'll give you a, a, my story when I was on the brink of changing, I don't know why I called it this, I called it the last cigarette syndrome. Remember, I'm older than you guys, so back then, I don't know, there were cigarettes around a lot. And you know when you're about to quit? You know how you take apart your apartment and you're gonna find that damn last cigarette and you're gonna smoke it, right, <laughs> kind of thing? Sometimes I think we do that. I think our flare-ups happen so badly, right, right when we're on the cusp of a big change. I'll tell you a funny story. My friend who was, who, who didn't come out yet that he was um, gay, he, we were going to visit his family. So he said to me, he's like, I want you to come with me and you know, let's just kind of be chill and whatever. Oh my God, you guys, he acted more gay than I've ever seen him. <laughs> I told him that later, it was really funny. Because we do that, right? When we're on the cusp of, we want to come out, right? And just be who we are, right? We start to hold on to, Right, these false beliefs or things about ourselves because it's scary, right? Am I making sense? That's why the yoga is so key. Is we come in here and you know, you know, I write a lot of blogs and one of the blogs I wrote is, you know, I think one of the hardest things about Bikram yoga is you got to look at yourself for 90 minutes. There's still people that can't do that, not for your reasons, Kathleen, but just because they can't look. But slowly. Right? It's not that we even like who we are, but we become at least more familiar. And then, you know, familiarity, you come a little bit more and it starts to breed a little bit more acceptance. You know, and then maybe you start to love yourself, but you don't like your behaviors. Your behaviors. And then, you know, then you get more comfortable and you start to understand why you have the behaviors that you have and you're a little bit more, okay, I see. And then, you start to go, okay, well, you know, I see and understand in that behavior. I guess it's not working so well for me. Maybe now I'll start to make some changes. But we gotta be that tender with ourselves. Right? Yeah, and I have one more question yeah. for you. Um, this is what I've been also struggling with. I, I'm very excited about coming back and I, and I try to talk to everybody about it. And, so a lot of times I get the responses like going to the dentist. It's hot. Ugh, I don't want to do yeah. it. And, and after a while, it can be discouraging for a person when you don't have a support group. So right. how what you own a studio, so how do you maneuver through life and you just be the best person you can be regardless of the negativity of people in the practice yeah. or around the practice? Yeah. So how do you like, yeah. That. That's a good question, too. Um, the yoga will start to strengthen an integrity about yourself. That will, instead of the energy affecting you, you'll affect that energy. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, right, you become a conduit then for. So it's not, so yes. It won't matter. Won't matter, and not only that, you're going to help reflect <coughs> some of the behaviors that maybe they need to see, and they'll want to sharpen their own integrity. 
right? And you know what? And I, that's not to say that there are days where I, I know uh, when I'm irritated, um, when I'm when I'm really irritated, Michael knows this. That he's on my team, and when I get mad, I get short, and I know that. And I'm like, okay, you need to check out for a little bit because my fuse is shorter. Here's the thing, too, as I, I'm telling you my tools, but you're going to have yours too, because you're going to become more conscious. You're going to become more witnessing how you are, and then you're going to be able to navigate it well. I think it's wrong to share with you that um, you're not going to have stressors and you're not going to have things that bother you and you're not like that's you know that you're not going to have a voice that's critical at times that's but do we let it control us right sometimes I have a vision of that part of me is like a little movie running and I just sit it in the corner and it just runs Right? But I, I don't use that, that, that's not navigating my choice. Right? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're gonna navigate the healthy choices of your life. And you know what too? Make fun of it. Sometimes I hear myself go off on somebody, I'm like, look at you, Michelle, judging left and right, you know? I mean, like, I make fun of myself, right? Because we're all human, you know? It's, it happens. So, um, Stay with your practice, right? And, and, uh, and, and it, it sounds to me like the way I see you right now, I feel like your energy is, is right there wanting more. You know, right there, you're... you're yeah, I'm also getting hammered. Yeah, 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 okay. And you just want to stay home. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, then go walk in nature, go do something, right, where you can at least ground yourself and be back to neutral. And I, I just, you know, it, and, 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 and you don't have to make, you don't have to be inauthentic. Allow that part of you that feels disappointed to feel it, but don't let it be the one that makes the decision. And what it needs is some love, right? Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of consciousness, it isn't necessary for us to live in this world with consciousness. You can have a pretty decent life without it, but you won't really have a good one. <laughs> you really won't. You won't have the life you want. And, you know, and, that, and the yoga is giving you that. It's heightening your way, your, your, your wiser ways, you know, to, to navigate and, and create good choices for how you want to be. We're all so different, and we weren't meant to come on this earth without our own unique contribution. That's silly to think that. What is it, one in 433 trillion to even become a human being? That alone is special. So, you know, we do something with it. Now, I was in a cloud, I don't know, Four, four decades, maybe? You know what I mean? Like, to really be conscious. And I'm still, but man, use the tool, right? And, and, and like I was saying in class, if you don't have good physicality, and you aren't pretty, pretty clear mentally and go through the journey, which it takes, you're never gonna live the full destiny of your life. Because think about it, when you don't feel good, you're not really your best self. Right, you're just not. So having, being healthy and, and, you know, having this be intact and clear and working for you, you know, is a start to unraveling, right, the design of your life and your contribution while you're here. And yoga is the, and yoga is the transformational modality to do it. How cool is that? So... Um, I already kind of said all that. I just wanted to share with you that um, to listen to that voice of transformation and to really love that journey for yourself. And it's okay 
you know, at times when you get stuck. You know, one of the things I did for my growth is I decided to compete. When we opened in 2003, it was sort of this new thing being talked about, yoga competitions. It was kind of a cool thing, a new way to expose yoga to the world. That was the whole, there were a lot of yoga competitions in India. And, um, and remember back when I started to, um, literally I could go see Bikram at any time. You know, I went to a lot of his advanced retreats and there was the same hundred of us every time. <laughs> And you would really get to know Bikram, the person, because he would do these things called hot cocos. And you start at 11 at night and go till 4 in the morning. And you wear your jammies and you bring your pillow. And there's hot cocoa. And he only does his talk philosophy. It was an amazing, unfortunately, we don't have that now. But it was an amazing way. So I was really tied into the roots of that community. And what sprang from that is conversation about how we can bring yoga to the world and why not start a competition. So it started in 2005. And um, Cynthia Ware is a good friend of mine, also a teacher, and many of you may know her. And I met her, uh, and then I decided there was a bunch of us that, because the, 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 the competitions literally were um, very small. They were in San Francisco outside of the Ferry Plaza, you know, right on the grass. We had a sign up that said yoga competition. <laughs> And then maybe three judges that did a little, you know, and you got a, a thing and everybody went out and had something to eat and they won. I mean, it was just really rinky-dink and but fun and meaningful and it had, you know, he did seven postures in three minutes back then. Um, and then obviously it's you now 16, 17 years in. But I remember when I started competing, this is the point I want to share with you, is, you know, whether you choose to compete or not, but it was, what I want you to do is, um, like you're doing here, Cheney, is she's taking advantage of me here. So I want you all, right, to take advantage of things that come to you, smart that you're here today, right? Take advantage of the things that come to you because you're gonna learn a little bit more. In my case, when I started to compete, um, I did well. I came, I think, at first and second place in the regional, and then, um, then it was the big stage. It was like the first few times that it was national in Los Angeles at a hotel and we were down in the dungeon, there was no light and, we, and I was V for Venard and back then it was alphabetical. Literally I waited until eight or nine that night to compete and that's a very hard thing to do to keep yourself warmed up and calm down, right, for that amount of time, right? And, um, but I remember the first time I, I got up on stage, remember it's only three minutes and it's super quiet and you have to show the seven postures, and now there's six, but you still have to show the same thing. You have to show, it's a story of your spine. So you have to show a rounded spine, the compression. You have to show a back bend. You have to show traction and twisting. And then you have to show two other kind of advanced postures, but show that your strength, your balance, and your flexibility. And then you're rated on technique. And you're also judged on you know how well you can execute and keep the grace and the flow and there's timing and you have to hold the asana and all that's beautiful so i'm up on stage and it's quiet and i'm about ready to do standing head to knee and my leg is wobbling like crazy right i can do standing head to knee i've been doing it for years and now my leg is like a noodle but it wasn't so much that as it was the amount of doubt going on in my head for three minutes all i did was beat myself up what are you doing here? You didn't train enough. This is stupid. What makes you think? Blah, blah, blah. I was like in shock. I'm like listening to this voice. <laughs> I was appalled. Is that what I feed myself? I remember I came down and they give you a rose and everyone claps. You did so good. I was so down. I couldn't believe that. Like, really? You're not going to vote for yourself? What the heck, right? You know? <laughs> but see, we don't know. We got tapes going on. So I share that with you because that was a tool for me to really learn some of the stuff that I was, had no merit. Where did that come from? Beat yourself up, that's not going to get you anywhere. But we do it. 
right? So my life's been a journey, and I, I'll tell you what, on the international stage in China, no. I was like, I'm proud to be here. You're going to see some guys wake it up, <laughs> right? Just in a very humble way, but I was so, you know, I felt the love, it was, and it was indicative of my journey. So cool. So, um, before I step into some postures, you know, maybe if you guys have any questions, but I thought what would be very useful is to show you a couple of techniques in the, the postures themselves and that what you can hold on to, and, and Dawn said she would be the demonstrator for that. Bye, Melissa. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. Really great. Love you, too. <laughs> Love you a lot. Um, uh, so I'm going to go back to, for a second, one of the, just to ground us again on the practicality of the yoga. Okay, because I love where we went, by the way, that's great. You know, a lot of times I get a lot of questions about the postures, but to know the real meaning behind what we do is impactful, right? The value that's there. So to bring it right down into, right, what you do on your mat. So remember, it's not so much about depth. It's about literally technique. And I'm going to go back to when I learned from Bikram. He did not really care that you did the full expression of the posture. He would make you over and over again do the technique until he knew you got it right. You might do it six or seven times. If he didn't feel that you understood the technique, again, Michael, again. And then you'd still be half, and if he saw that you got the technique, good, you're on your way. Technique. You want to know the technique, and then it's your journey to just keep perfecting it. Remember. So as you're doing that, not only are you working on the physical body, because remember, this sequence is already made up for you. You don't need to reinvent it. Just do it the right way, and then you're going to maintain your youth, body, full of vitality, immune to diseases, right? But you're also starting to show up and access the skills of your mind. You're bringing your mind and your body together. So when we say something as simple as interlace your fingers, release the index fingers, cross your thumbs, you're automatically, in that one moment, bringing your mind and your body together. And you do that over and over again, then you're going to access a mind that's really clear. Remember your mind, the job it has is to give you, is to take in information. you got to be careful how you interpret it because those filters are from your upbringing or your environment, right? And we have to learn what those filters are. But your mind is responsible for bringing in the information. So you want to make sure, right, your mind and your body, you have that connected. Otherwise, you're thinking about dinner. You're thinking about, you know, a conversation you had, and it's making you present. Present. And when we're present, that's how we live. We live now. We access, right, that mind-body connection. We become sharp, and in so doing, we are present, all by working the physical. Pretty cool. So... There are three postures in particular where you're doing that a lot. Standing head to knee, standing bow, and balancing stick. You're working the body amazing in a physical way, which I want to talk about. You're also working your mind because you're really heightening your concentration skills. Why? Because you're on one leg. You're on one leg. You're on two legs, you can go to India and back. Think about dinner. You're on one leg, ho. Oh. Right, ladies? Who was I talking to in the bathroom? Boom. you got to focus. So those three postures, oh, man. But you got to warm up, right? you got to bend that. Heart is going, right? It's hard. It's hot. Teacher's yelling at you. I want to do the whole thing. Frustrated. I did better yesterday. All those things, right, they come in. You know, and then we do the floor series, which I told you is, you know, the real yoga. But I think those, those two, or those three, um, have a tremendous impact on the bigger things that I'm sharing with you today. You want to practice those? Sure, why not? Anybody have any questions? Because this is all about you. I'm just throwing something at you for, for you to have. But if you have a question, Kathleen, have you any questions? Um, if you go into it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Dawn, you want to come on up? Dawn, let's clap for her. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to Don do? is a beautiful teacher, but wonderful friend of mine, and has an, a, a great example of an amazing practice. Um, and I think the way she executes these three postures is something for us to, to learn from, okay? So, what is the most important thing in standing head to knee, standing bow, and balancing stick? Side your breathing. Lock your knee. Yes, right, gotta lock your knee. So, what does the locking the knee really do? Our friend is in here who has that knee problem. But what, what do you think locking the knee does? I know, remember, you know, yoga is 90 minutes, so we have to say things in the shortest way. Remember, Bikram yoga is available to beginners, so we gotta say things. Remember, the words even in Bikram yoga, they're not very long and sophisticated. They're pretty short, right? And they're on commands by design. So lock the knee, once you lock the knee, kind of all of a sudden you're like tightening things up, which is really what locking the knee is. And it's to protect so that you don't injure it, correct? Yes, that too. But the reason why you're protecting the knee is because you're contracting the muscles in the quadricep right. muscle. Yeah, that's what keeps it protected is yes. that lock. Yes. Yeah. So what it's doing too is it's helping to lengthen. Actually, it's a, it's a theme throughout the entire class. Right, it's going to lengthen, help help the tendons, right, the tissue, everything that surrounds the knee, making space. That's all we're doing in the class. We're making space so that there's nothing obstructed, right? So when we tighten the quadricep muscle, what is it doing to the back side of the leg? Relaxing it. What we do to the front is the opposite to the back, right? If we're, if we're loosening the back, then we're then we're tightening the front. The two go hand in hand, and we want loose hamstrings. If you want to call them that. Right, then that means we're loosening things that are around the lower spine. So a locked out leg. There's a key component to, though to it, if you could do it. So when Dawn is locking out the leg, okay, you can do whichever leg, yeah. Great, now she's locking out her leg, so what do you think she is doing? What, what's an action that would be locking the leg? Um, flexing her quad. Flexing her quad. Lifting her knee. Her kneecap is lifting up, very good. So in other words, where's the energy going? So in other words, she isn't going to the side. She isn't going to the other side. She isn't going forward. She isn't going back. She's staying with her leg perfectly straight. Know how, know how we say solid tight lamppost on bending no knee? Right? Well, that leg is not going to move, and it's going to stay in that same spot all three postures. Relax for a moment. All three. Standing head to knee, your standing leg is like a flagpole. It is not going to move. And you're going to take that lifted leg and you're going to kick it up. Put your head down, do fancy stuff with your upper body. Right? Standing bow, your, your standing leg is locked. You're going to kick your leg back and bring your body down. This leg isn't doing anything. Balancing stick. Your body's going to come down to you like Tom's, giving you all the benefits, cardiovascular, stretching your spine, traction in your spine. Your standing leg isn't doing anything. It's the same. I say that to myself every practice. I have this term I used. In fact, Steph Curry says it all the time, and it's my term. He says locked in. I'm like, that's my word. <laughs> but I, I, do, I say that to myself. I lock in. I do not move. All the weight's evenly distributed. But you can't get there. You got to start small. But locking the leg is the most important thing. You got to lock your leg. Because yes, you're going to protect it. But let's go even one step further. You're going to strengthen. Remember what I said about the legs? Got to have our legs working. Isn't that kind of weird? You think about standing up all day long, and somehow your blood takes 20 seconds to make a revolution right around. It's got to go down and back up. So if we don't have the pumps working, right? So we build these strong legs. We have those pumps working in our legs to keep our circulation. What is Hatha Yoga? Hatha Yoga is all about circulation. Keeping the circulation moving throughout your body the way it's intended. If we do it that way, then our bodies are gonna work optimally, efficiently, the way it's supposed to for a long, long time. Right, we call it these fancy terms, but I like to think of, when I, I'm not a medicine person or a doctor, but usually when, I, when you're telling me something that's wrong, instantly I go to some part of your body that has inflammation. Just so you know, when you start to feel inflammation, it's one of the earliest signs that your mind will detect that you need to pay attention to something. 
If you don't stop there, you will travel to further injury. So there's a lot of terms for inflammation. Dementia being one of them. It's inflammation in the brain. But the moment you can catch inflammation and yoga makes you so tuned into your body, then you have to go there and pay attention. To it. <coughs> Don't not do your yoga practice, but maybe you know you're gonna breathe and go a little bit more gentler in that part of the body. Maybe you're, maybe you have intention where like my elbow feels a little bit inflamed and you're gonna stretch it out just a little bit more slowly. Maybe you don't put so much pressure on it and just a little bit, right? That's how we're smart. Mind giving you information and making sure that you're interpreting it in your best interest. Not the shoulds, not the pressure, but what's in your best interest. So, right? I'm getting off, but these things all have a tangent. They're connected. So let's watch Don standing head to knee. Just yeah. do it. Or, okay. okay. No, I'll talk to you. <laughs> like, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'll talk to you. Okay. So standing leg locked, right leg locked, and lift up your left leg, interlock all ten fingers, and grab your left foot. Okay. All right. Good. Now you can come out in, in any because I'm going to talk for a little bit. Don't, no, I want you to do it, but if it gets too tiring, you can come back. Oh, so go ahead in it. And I'm going to talk a little bit. Okay, this is the first part of the posture. Now, notice Dawn, right? She looks like she's down low. If you were up a little bit, that's fine. You can do it that way if it means you can grab your foot. For her, she can come down. She's been doing it a long time. Very good. So see how she has her heel underneath your knee? If your heel was back a little bit, that's fine. What I want you to start doing, what I'm emphasizing, is to grab your foot and look at her grip. Oh, it looks so easy for Dawn. But that 10 finger grip is really hard. But you got to keep trying. And remember, all the postures that we did before this one has helped you. Even pranayama, you're doing the grip. That's why eagle is so important. So the grip is really key because it's going to help you flex the foot. But look at her standing leg. Her standing leg, she can hold it now probably well more than a minute. And in my old school teaching, we would hold you in this posture one minute before we had you kick out. We would hold you. You would stay right here. Nowadays, you know, maybe not so long, but I, I like the fundamentals that way because it gets you to stay. She's focused in the mirror on her standing leg. Mind-body connection is happening. She's concentrating. Remember those things that we say? She's determined. She's trying her best. She's being patient. She's breathing. And once her left leg is locked, and then she's sure of it, she can kick. Excuse me, right leg. Maybe the other leg. Yeah. 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 So when you do this leg, I want you to, when you kick out, I want you to, to lean a little bit. So to show the wrong way. So her, her, now her left leg. Now, do you guys think that that's a locked out leg? I don't know. Pretty good. Now she's going to kick her right heel <laughs> forward towards me. Ah. Now bring your, your right leg up a little bit. Did you guys see that difference? Mm -hmm. You're not leaning back in the heel. And remember I said before there's geometry in this? Watch how she does it. Come forward again. Look at how much more strength she has. Mm -hmm. Stomach is in. She looks a little bit lighter. Like she could hold it more than if she was kind of hanging down. Now, she's not going to move her standing leg. Now do your fancy things. Elbows down. Yep. She's not moving her standing leg. Now she's going to round in. Just do your best. Yep. So she's not moving that standing leg. Everything is lifted. That thigh is nice and tight. And she's going to round it and get more out of the posture. She has that upside down L like Linda. And she can hold it all day long. Very good. So good. And then it's even harder trying to come out the same way. But keep the weight. Yep. Four, keep that. Yep. Very good. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Right? Awesome. Yeah. So how about the kicks and giggles we all try? <laughs> okay? Just use the information. Just don't try it. Standing leg absolutely locked out and just notice for yourself in the mirror, right? That you're not gonna move that standing leg. So it's you're literally not, you're huh? not crossing when you're kicking out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, good question for you, yes. Over time, you can loosen them a little bit because we want the wrist to be straight. Don't go there at the moment. Right? Just think that tight grip, okay? Okay, so it doesn't matter to me what side you use, I will say the dialogue though. Okay, stand, wipe your hands, shift your weight, lock whatever leg, interlock all ten fingers, grab your foot in front of you. Tight grip, ten fingers, interlocked. Very good. Now stay with your breathing, 
Remember to grab your foot, get the grip nice and tight, and look in the mirror, and notice that your leg, your right thigh is tight, kneecap is lifted, everything is lifting up, it's like a flagpole, it doesn't move, all the weight's evenly distributed. From there, lift your left leg up. Lift your left leg up, and don't move your right leg. It has to be up straight, very good, Jeannie. No bend in the elbows, no bend in the elbows. And kick that left heel forward, upside down, L like Linda. Now here's where I say to myself, lock in. Ryan, lift the right leg just a little bit, chest up. Now I lock in, I'm not gonna move the other leg. And then you can start to bend the elbows. Keep kicking your left heel forward, keep tightening the right thigh, you've locked in. Very good, then the elbows can come down. And then slowly, very good. That's it, Blair, just lock that left leg a little bit more, a little bit more as you kick that right heel forward. That was better though than class. Right leg up there, Ryan, just a little bit. Yes, very good. Now lock in and hold it. Good job, change. Come on out. Come on out. Good. Isadora, very good. Good. And Kathleen, I didn't get to see you, but we're going to do it again because we have another side. Okay? <laughs> so you don't want to go home feeling kind of one side more than the other. So take a breath. <laughs> yeah. And let's do it again. You want to try? I, I can't. I can't even bend over and grab my foot. So, so stand up. Let me ask you. I, oh. I can't. Okay. Can you I lift? too much going on. Too much? Okay. So, Let's stand up. That, that's going to come over off over time, but I can't. Okay, so for you, relax. You guys just stand where you are. Relax. Let me see which leg would you like to do. Great. Can you pick up that left leg even more? Look in the mirror. Concentrate on your right leg and lift it up. Now start to round down. Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. Now hold it there. Hold it there. Now bring your hands closer to your shin bone. Very good. Nice job. Nice job, and now come out. That's awesome. You're just gonna keep doing that over and over again. Nope, don't, don't ever give up. That's really good. So what the point that I was getting at too is that if in your case, right, if the leg has to come up higher for you to grab the foot, I don't care. It's okay, that's okay. Once, once you can do it a little bit more, if you need to just stay here and round down, it's just better than doing this. Okay, because this to me, you can kind of lean into stuff and you're not, I'm, I'm ask, I am asking you to work. Yes, and then just round a little bit. You have that bulldog in your eyes, right? And that standing leg is gonna be locked whether you can grab your foot or not. And then over time, remember, it's not just this posture, it's all the other postures. Very good, very good. Hold it for five. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and now come out. Great! So you have to do that for yourself. You have to go, okay, I can do this two more seconds, and then come out. All you're doing is unraveling the posture. Remember, this is your yoga. Don't get confused with all the depth and the fancy stuff. I'm just trying to do a drill here to show you the standing leg locked, and you're doing that, okay? So, everybody together, do your other leg. Breathe in and out through the nose. Shift your weight to whatever leg, interlock all 10 figures, and grab your foot as best you can. So this is why that backside stretching layer is gonna help, because you're almost there with the standing leg. You just gotta open up a little bit. It's, your, it's not necessarily your spine, it's just the back of your standing leg, I can see it. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Ryan, the weight's gotta come more forward. Yes, and then kick. Very good. Two, Izzy, come forward a little bit and go towards more of the mirrors. That's it, Michael. Good, Kathleen, lock in. And bend your elbows. Left leg up, Ryan. Come forward. And then body down if you can. Like a flagpole, that's it. Forehead on the knee, lock in. Both legs locked in the way going forward. Can't move that standing leg, very good. And then come on out slowly. Try not to move that left leg. Try not to move it. Lift up, stomach in. That's why it's really hard. It's very hard, right? Our body wants to find a way to compensate. We move even a half an inch towards the back or the right side, but everything has to be lifted up. Lift it up. So let's try standing bow because it's even harder there. <laughs> why not? Right side. Right arm bends at the waist. Palm is facing up. Good job. I like that you're staying. You can try too if you want. No? Okay, good to watch. Bend your right leg. Left leg up. Excuse me, left arm up. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that would be fun. <laughs> okay, so uh, you heard me talk in class. You have to look at your fingers. Make sure your wrists are straight and your fingers are an extension of your arm. Very good. And charge forward. Charge forward. You've got to lock that left arm even more, Blair. Good, Ryan. Do it like you mean it. You're going to touch the mirror. Very good. So kick back. Maybe chin up, Izzy, just a little bit. Yes. Now open your shoulders more. Very good. Dawn, you did it the other day. It was great when you came down. 
Very nice, Kathleen. Stay kicking. Standing leg lock doesn't move forward or back. It's straight up. Very nice, gentlemen. Stay with it. Now come forward. Now the standing leg is supporting you as you stretch and kick equally the same. So get your fingers stretching as your toes up towards the ceiling. Body down. Kick. Standing leg lock. Kick. Kick. Open up. Change. Very nice. Good. Yes. So you have to say to yourself that the standing leg has no choice. You have to be really on it. It cannot move. That's your, you can do anything you want on it all day, but it cannot move forward or back. That's your stability. You can do anything you want on top of that. Make sense? Left side. You want to try? Well, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. When your leg behind you goes the opposite. Yeah. What's, what's, what's the adjustment on that? If you're. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, stop. Start again. So the beginning is your form. Right? So even before you start, you're going to make sure, don't do anything yet, you're perfect where you are, standing leg locked, your right leg is going to kick straight back. Stop. Now it's starting to kick to the side. Yes. Yes. Yep. And I, it, it's okay if I can't go in. It's okay. Like I can't. Yes, you can. This, okay. You're doing great. And you're even looking in the mirror. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Kick back, straight back, straight back. Straight back, standing leg lock, very good. A little bit more, now hold it for five, breathe, hold it for three, hold it, hold it, and come out. Yeah, that's great. It's awesome. New, but that's a better setup. Yeah. Move into where yeah. It needs to go. Okay. You answered it yourself, right? The death comes, right? Was hard. Yeah, yeah, you know, right? But you know, it's an indication. Remember how I said that's the story of your spine? It's where your spine is right now, right? This is a backward bend posture. Right, the kicking and the stretching equal and opposite, but the kicking, by the way, okay, where I started to have my breakthroughs is realizing that I didn't kick hard enough. A lot of you hear me say that. Literally, I feel like I have to kick the wall behind me. If I let go, I'd fling into the mirror because I'm holding on so tight and I'm kicking my leg back hard. So for you, right, you're going to have to watch your alignment. Foot over your head, feet in one line from the side. It's in the dialogue, but it starts from the beginning. That's why we ask you to bring your knees together, is you want to kick, so it's kick straight back. Right? So sacrifice the depth, stay in the form, and then just be patient. Remember, that's the other part, too. Right? We're never on our own timetable. That's why yoga is so wonderful. It's because we learn how to be patient. And just trust when you do the right things over and over again, it will happen. It, it will. It will just happen. But the waiting is the hardest. We think three weeks is enough. We think a year is enough. We think three years is enough, right? <laughs> right? That's why, you know, I have this thing where... You know, I, I tell this to my staff, destinations are far and few between. Married, kids, graduation. That's why I better like the journey, because we're in more of that. We're in more of that, right? So you're in it. It's great. Other side. Grab your left leg. Right arm up. Now, there's so many things to talk about, but our focus and skill today is the standing leg. It cannot move. Go. Charge your body forward. Kick your left leg back. Right leg forward. Very good. Nice job. Keep concentrating. Beautiful. Standing leg locked. Good, Ryan. Now open it up more. Nothing to change on the standing leg. Beautiful. Coming down. Coming down. Kicking that leg back hard. Coming down. Standing leg looks really good. Keep it nice and strong there. Thigh contracted. Getting into the back bend as you kick. Body down. Come forward. Touch the mirror. Kicking and stretching. Standing leg strong. Now open it up a little bit more. Body down and kick more. Kick and come out. So good. Now come out, keeping the leg where it is. Oh, man. Left leg down. Good. Yay. Okay, balancing stick. And then we're good. <laughs> Ryan, I was good today. Ryan I didn't hold the postures like forever. He, Ryan knows I like to hold it. So does Don. Can I ask another question? Yes, of course. Oh, this is for you. So, um, so when we're doing this one and we're Setup. And we're kicking back. If we can only go here, do we just go here? If we're in, do you know what I mean? Like, is well, what if, if you went further, what happens? Well, if you go further from well, that, it's a little painful on the lower back. Okay, absolutely. Right. So, if there's pain, you're gonna perfect answer. Is is you're gonna back off a little bit to where you're not feeling the pain and you can hold it. But this is a this is a yoke. This is. You're the in the pose. In the post. Yeah. Okay. I'd rather you be there than be on two feet and stand there and wait for everybody. Okay. No. Get something out of it from the very beginning. Okay. Pain sensation. Pain. 
That in my chest is bizarre. When you just tweak that one, I'm like, ah. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. Can you imagine if you weren't working on it, what's going to happen years from now? This will get tighter and tighter and tighter. No. Get rid of it now. So just do a little bit. You have the right mindset. Mindset is everything. If you have the right mindset to me, you're a yogi and you're on your way. Pain is no good. Stretching sensation kind of pain is good. So you got to know the difference for yourself. Okay. All right. Balancing stick. Anyone have another question? Happy to answer. All right. Feet together. Arms up over your head. Now the same thing. The exercise is in the standing leg. So you want your hips forward, upper body back. Now big step forward on whatever leg. Right leg will do. Now pick up your left leg. Now pick up your left leg. Point your toes. Don't change anything. Don't move your right leg. Just come down and lift your left leg up. Don't move your right leg. Don't move your right leg. Don't move your right leg. That's it. Concentrate on it. Very good. Come down. Come down. Stretch the left toes back. So Jeannie, you got to come forward. Move to right leg. Come forward. Come forward. Body down, Isadora. Body down. Body down. Now stretch as you kick. Excuse me. Stretch, stretch, and then come on up. Okay. I meant to say stretch your toes as you stretch your arms. So to me, you feel really buoyant when you're doing it the right way. You cannot be loose. You'll be heavy and you're hanging on your hip. You gotta lock that standing leg. You've done two other postures before this one. I know it's cardiovascular, but we're still working the legs, left side. Big step forward on the left leg. Shift the weight, lock the right leg. Notice how in the dialogue we have you stop for a moment. You cannot move that standing leg. Not forward or back, right or left. Come down, make it straight like a flagpole. It doesn't move, it doesn't move. All you're moving is body down, leg up, and you're getting into it properly. Very good. So that's why you got to stretch forward because you're immediately going to, your body's going to try to move back. So come forward and point your right toes. Very good. Contract your left thigh. Now feel everything in that geometry, everyone. Body like a tabletop and come forward, stretch, and you're done. So nice. Go back and bring your arms down by your side. Good. Did you guys notice that a little bit? Yeah? Standing leg? Good. Yeah? So all of because we have a tendency to roll back but you didn't see how their legs were beyond that immediate vertical position <coughs> so Emmy Cleaves is uh, if you know if you don't know her Google her she's been doing this yoga for uh, maybe 50 years I think she is 90 you know, and she used to yell at me a lot. She was my in my posture clinics, but in, in, a, in a good way. And she would say, every posture is tractioning your spine. Every single posture. <laughs> so that means we're pulling everything up. So if you're leaning, that's why a very obvious one is this one. When you start to go back like this, you're not doing anything. You have to come down, right? I'm not moving my legs. I'm not moving my legs. I'm coming down from my lower spine, not this. Right? Right? I'm coming down. And then guess what? This posture too, right? I'm tractioning my spine. But I can't traction my spine until I do the work in my legs. Right? My legs are so important. Not to mention why, which is, you know, what I told you in the floor series. So, you know, Sometimes Bikram Yoga, I think, gets accused of not doing enough for your upper body, and that's not true. I think sometimes we know that it's doing so much for the legs, we think that it's not. But if you do work the postures really well, oh my God, your upper body strength. You've got to really lock your elbows out, you know, in postures. You've got to really squeeze tight. A lot of times we're not stretching up towards the ceiling. Just because we say it in this posture, palms together, right? And we say stretch up to the ceiling. It doesn't mean that you just do it for one second and then they fall and we turn. <laughs> you gotta do it the whole time, right? You gotta do it the whole time. So that's why some teachers will say it again, right? Guess what you're doing? You're traction in your spine. You're always come up out of the waist, touch the ceiling, bend your body to the, you're always tra traction in your spine, right? Even in Eagle, it's still traction in your spine, upper body back, traction in your spine. Right? I'm happy to talk more postures, but I'm not going to keep you longer than what I said. Uh, the breath one at the end. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know what I think? I, I think my lower abdomen muscles that support my lower back are what's going to be strengthened. Yeah. They might not be. Right. So, when we, when we sit and we breathe. Yeah. I have really good diaphragm control, but I don't know how to engage my lower abdominals to get them to come up. 
and I see and can I see you do couple body? Can I see it? Okay, stop. Looks really good to me. Yes. Yeah. So I'm the only thing I'm gonna huh, the only thing I'm gonna ask you to do is can you straighten your arms? Yeah. Your fingers together, and sit up nice and tall so you're supporting your spine. Now relax your belly for me. Very good. And now let's see you do it. Good. Now stop. Now I want you to try it a little bit faster. Don't worry about how much contraction you're doing in your abdominal muscle. Just think about doing it faster. Fine. So, here's my experience with kapha body breathing. I feel like you're doing it correctly. I think the more you do it, the more refined you're going to be at it. Because I feel like you're doing a little bit of the inhale with it. It's very hard to teach you how to do that. You just have to, there's no inhalation, it's only the exhalation. So, you know, that's why we say as beginners, right, what's an easy way to look at it is imagine you have a big candle. And when I say big candle, it's because your air has to be like a softball and it has to really blow out that candle. It's gotta be powerful, powerful, right? And don't think about the technique so much because I think that's going to stop you and you're going to get kind of awkward in how you like inhale and exhale. Right, it's more about uh, opening my throat, opening my mouth, and letting the air come. Yeah, because eventually it is the diaphragm muscle, right. right? The diaphragm muscle is going to go up against the lower part of the lungs and it's going to spit the air out. It's really what it's doing. Well, and the but, same thing goes for the six. <coughs> you guys always say, yes. I don't even know how to do that. Okay, you know what? That's what we're going to do. Yeah, you know what? I, I love that you brought that up. We're going to end on a sit-up. You all were terrible at your sit-ups. Turn around. <laughs> I know. So let's teach it correctly. Oh my world! Don't worry. At my studio, they're all bad too. They are. Okay. So um, your sit-ups. Okay. There's. They're just gonna. You can lay here and relax for a second while I talk to you about them. So it's an energizing sit-up, and we have to exhale out twice because we have to get the air out once and then get the air out of the lungs just a little bit more. Why? Because when you take that next inhale, you're energized and ready to go for your next posture. Right, it's an energizing sit-up. So actually, I don't know if you've taken Michael Harris, he talks a lot about this. This is actually a breathing technique. When you double blast, right? You hear me say double jerk, right? So you want to kick, you have to kick the air out of the lungs and then your next breath in has a lot more oxygen to it so that you're energized for the next pose. The form, you're stretching the backside of your body. Now, not only is this good for your lungs, but you get a chance again to stretch the back of your legs, right? You have to make sure that you finish the posture, forehead on the knees and elbows down towards the floor. And it's using your abs when you keep your heels down. So there's a lot going on, you know, in our Bikram sit-ups. There was one other thing about it that I forgot. Did I forget something, teachers, on this pose? Arms? Oh, with your ears, yeah, because a lot of times people will, like, throw their arms yeah, yeah. instead of using, yeah. you know, the adult strength. Yes. Do you round your back, or do you come up? You so you mean like right? You know what? Yeah, uh, everybody, sit up for a second. We're gonna watch Ryan do it the right way. Yeah, the right way. <laughs> okay, wait. See how his heels are down. Flex your feet. Arms over your head. Palms face up. He's only crossing his thumbs. His arms stay with his ears. Ears. Now, some of you watch his arms and his ears. Some of you watch the heels that are down. Now, take a nice deep breath. Now, come up. Exhale out twice. Grab your big toes. Forward to your knees and elbows to the floor. Did you see that? He rounded his spine, he grabbed his big toes, his forehead was on the knees, his heels stay down on the floor. Because so a lot of times when people come up, they do it either one of two things. They'll throw their arms, right? And that's bad for the lower back, yeah. right? And they're just really just, right, using momentum, or they come up. <laughs> now, also too, maybe you can't do it, Yeah. right? right. So you gotta be careful. Because if you're doing too much to compensate for your lower back, lack of lower back strength and core strength, you know, then I would prefer that you roll to the side or just watch and make sure that you're not hurting yourself while you're gaining the strength to do it the right way. Which I did. That's okay. It's all right. Just, oh, no, that's not good. You don't want to do that. 
right? You don't want to hurt your back. The rounding of the spine, what is that helping do? It's helping to get rid of the waste in the lungs. Because um, the squeeze gets more squeezing. Yeah. yeah. Double blast. Ready? Everybody, turn around. Flex your feet. I'll wait. So legs together, flex your feet, keep your heels down. Arms up over your head, palms face up, cross your thumbs, arms and head together. Heels down. Now take a nice deep breath. Now come up, exhale out twice, grab your big toes, heels down, forehead to the knees, finish, elbows to the floor. Pretty good. One more time. You don't have the technique? Got to do it again. <laughs> flex your feet, arms up, palms face up, arms and head together, keep your heels down, inhale, breathing in, come up. Exhale out twice, grab your big toes, Jeannie, elbows down, elbows down, Jeannie, elbows down, elbows down, and touch your foot, okay. <laughs> okay, good job. All right, you guys, that's a wrap. I'll come back and give you more, not unless, you know, um, have a look. Grab it, there's our mistake. <laughs> I'll start with what you talk. <laughs> I, I feel like I could stay. And one thing I'd like to do, though, is honor the, the time commitment I said. And I already went to one. Is that okay? No. Yeah. So I'll come back again if you want me for two hours, and I'll do that. This is for you, though, okay? And I don't want to, I'm not necessarily the best at timing, as these guys will tell you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm getting much better, and I really want to respect your time, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to, I'm not going to be credible. So go have a nice Sunday. Love you all. very much. <laughs> Email me anytime to, okay, any questions you have. Yep, and I love it here. I love Ryan and Isidore. I love you guys. You can really keep this going. Jeannie, really great. This is this is community was rebuilt again for you, for you guys, not for our benefit. We just know what it does to keep us as a community and to keep this practice going. So I'm so glad. You know, it sat here vacant for two years, ready for someone to, ready for these two. Ready for these two. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.